Hello, everyone. You're listening to the Small Business Show. I'm your host, Swire Ho, the promo guy. Today, we have Jen Carvel. She's a writer and entrepreneur. And then we're going to talk about the sell process, the mistakes that small business makes, and also how we could build better relationship if we want to grow a business. How are you doing, Jen? I'm fine. Thank you very much. Delighted to be here. So, uh, how, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Um, for a listener that wanted to find out more about what you do, can you give us a background and then you know how you uh, help small business to achieve uh, better success? Of course. Yeah, no, delighted to. I, sales, I guess, has been my mainstay throughout my rather long career. I've had various businesses, many of them sort of not much more than solopreneur or a couple of us, and one I built up. Um, from the kitchen table to a multi-million pound turnover. So a little bit of scaling going on there. And in the course of that, actually, I won uh, various awards, which was fantastic, but I did win uh, a big sales award, which was a huge honor. Um, but so, so sales became uh, my sort of go-to uh, authority subject, really, for a while during that, and I enjoyed teaching it enjoyed teaching other entrepreneurs and helping them out. So I, I love talking about sales. <laughs> okay. So obvious question, but want to get your thought, you know, we, the self process that we used to is changing, right? So obviously with the pandemic, uh, what we used to work in retail sales, for example, doesn't work anymore. It's about e-commerce or maybe you are, you know, really used to knocking on doors and talking to people, now people don't want you to come, right? So from your view, uh, you know, interacting with uh, clients, uh, what have you seen uh, change and how are people reacting to it? I think it's really interesting. I think sales has changed a lot in reality over the long term. I mean, let's face it, I've been doing it a long time. So, you know, I've seen a lot of changes. And, uh, you know, when I first started out, sales was a real sort of hard sell type of stuff that, you know, you've got a, a list of names and phone numbers. Names actually was, if you were lucky, phone numbers definitely was the only thing you got. And, you know, you'd sit in some grotty little office ringing people you'd never heard of trying to sell them a product you knew nothing about. And so, you know, that, that was, really hard selling and it was you know it's trans it, it's progressed from there over the years thank goodness to uh being a much more professional um occupation and a much more pleasurable thing to do and you're right you know the uh, uh, the pandemic accelerated that further you know in in many cases face-to-face -face sales went out the window but you know way back at the beginning of of my my business career of earning businesses i had i was doing telephone sales and i had um i was trying to get it started on a real bootstrap the absolutely nothing zero money and i had two small kids and i could not go out and sell in person but i was trying to sell furniture which obviously is quite a hands-on, want to see a product. And yet, because I was selling business to business, which is where you normally have to do a lot of, of contact with people, I developed some relationships whereby over periods of time, whereby after a few phone calls, people would say to me, oh, great, see you when you're next in. And actually, I'd never, never met them. But, you know, if you really work at that relationship building, whatever you do, if you can't see them, okay, you can't see them. But you can actually develop that good of relationship that people think of you as another human being, as a contact at, that you have a relationship with. And that's always what it's been about. It's been about long-term relationships, not one-night stands. <laughs> Well, since you talk about relationship, right? Um, is it more difficult to maintain that relationship now? You know, now we're doing it virtually instead of you know you can see a person eye to eye. You know, maybe you know you have the you know gesture that you can see. Uh, what what do you think? Or is it 
do you think that it's better to explore the relationship because you and I wouldn't have met, you know, if we, uh, if we weren't having this platform, right? Absolutely. Uh, we're in a total uh, different country across the ocean, uh, but we are talking and, you know, having this discussion. So I think relationships are also changing, right? I think that's right. And, you know, it's such, such a joy to meet people like you, which, as you say, you know, I'd have never have got to meet you. And it's, it's a, a wonderful privilege and an advantage. Um, so yes, I do think so. And and in some ways, people are very self-conscious, especially when they're new to selling or new to speaking. And part of that is always to do with our appearance and our body language and everything else. And there's a great consolation, I find, well, initially I found it down the telephone, they couldn't even see me. But of course, you know, even now they can only see that up up tiny bit of you you know the rest of you is hidden um you know so some of the pressure of that appearance thing is off so i think it helps people actually to to, to sell uh, and to and to develop relationships in some ways you know if they get over the block of it can't be done and think i can do it yeah, I, I would agree too, because, you know, right now, you know, we might be able to reach any part of the world, mm. right? But for me, I'm just talking to my camera, you know, I'm talking to you, right? But I'm, I'm really facing my monitors, my camera, and then just speaking to a microphone. So uh, I think for people who might be intimidated, right, uh, be, uh, before uh, public speaking is actually a really good way uh, to get started. You know, you're talking Absolutely. about information that you might know, uh, you could definitely see, you know, notes that you created, you know, for yeah. the episodes. Uh, and then it's less pressure, I would think, you know, if you have your equipment down, uh, you can actually uh, get to reach a lot of people because people are looking for different ways to get their contents right now. Definitely. And, and I find it great, you know, you can still, you know, sort of see notes coming up on the right hand side or see, you know, people talking to you and glance occasionally to them, providing you actually get that interface. I, you know, where I find public speaking challenging um, virtually is if, if it's completely no screen the other end, you know, if they just say, fine, you know, we're launching you now and everybody's here and you get some sort of screensaver up and you know you don't know how many people you're speaking to you know you're trying a bit of humor and and there's nobody there so you have no idea what's going on you can't see a smile you know that I find really challenging that's the worst of a lot but you know providing you've got somebody there that you can chat to and get a reaction out of and you know see if they're smiling or scowling at you or whatever you know it's it's a good start yeah, that that's another uh, part. You know, like you, normally, you know, speaker will be uh, very engaged when you see people nodding. You know, people are agreeing with you, taking notes and taking picture or whatever. But now, like, you know, you make a joke and then you don't see the response really. You know, some people are actually better. Some people actually can talk to themselves and laugh with themselves naturally. But then others, we get uh, feed on you know the the energy from the crowd. So you know it yeah. it. You know, like we're opening the statement, it's changing, right? So are you changing with the trend or are you trying to fight it? So which brings me to my next question, you know, for um, let's talk about mistakes. Uh, for the past, I would say 14 months now. Wow. Um, what are some of the mistakes that you have seen uh, small business are, are making? Well, I've seen a sort of... <sighs> A small proportion, and I, I hope, hopefully, it's a very small proportion of small businesses getting very desperate on leads. And I don't know about you, Swan, but I get drowned on LinkedIn by really, really bad sales approaches. Um, and, you know, which I have a real issue with because, you know, I get a message saying, to, you know, can you connect? Because I notice we both share an issue, uh, you know, not an issue, uh, an interest in X. And I think, no, I don't. I might have said that 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, what is wrong with you? Why don't you check out a profile before you write? And and it's extraordinary, you know, I'm not talking about knowing every intimate detail of somebody's life before you approach them for the first time, but 
that's the whole great thing about sales now. And one of the reasons it's not so much hard bashing on doors is we actually know it's better to do some research. You know, and suddenly there's this rush of this, you know, really awful um, non-research style stuff going on on LinkedIn. I don't know if it is anywhere else. I haven't hit it. But please, please, all small businesses, stick to modern sales. Stick to doing your research a little bit more carefully than that. And another pet hate of mine has always been, uh, but it still goes on, is when people approach you and go, hi, John, how are you? are you? Anyway, what I wanted to say is, if you want to know how I am, wait for the damn answer. <laughs> you know, it's so insincere. And, you know, seriously, if, if we are doing anything now, we're developing much better authentic relationships where we want to go for the long term and don't make a mockery of that in the beginning by saying stupid things like, how are you? And not waiting for an answer. It's got to come from the heart. Well, two things I noticed, right? So especially, you know, uh, my kids are back to in-person school right now. But when they're doing uh, virtual, and I see some grown-ups do that too, we kind of changed the way that we wanted to uh, share with other people because I think uh, for me as a person, I don't, I don't, I'm not good at small talk. So like, if you ask me how I am, I would answer you something, but then I really, you know, if it's just a business situation, go down to business. I'm actually fine with that, you know, just jump to business. But uh, however, I, I know that, you know, there are, uh, when I go networking, I know people who like to get warmed up, right? You know, get yeah. really to find out where you're at, you know, how are the kids, you know, how's the weather, and you do talk about that, you know, uh, building on, and then you go on to business, or maybe they just want to get to know each other. They might never talk about business until the last two minutes, you know. So let's get this done. Oh, okay, this is where we'll sign, and that might be it. So I think. Again, going back to your point, it's about the relationship. So it is, uh, it and is, and you're quite right. It's about developing relationships slowly, you know. And going back to what I was saying about research, you know, your first chats with people ought to be part of your research and getting to know them and seeing if you've got a rapport and finding out more about them. So sort of laying groundwork stuff you know, and probably not putting anything salesy on the table. You know, we don't do it in our personal lives, you know, bound up to somebody and say, hi, you know, would you like to give me some money for something, you know? And so why do people think it works in business? Of course it doesn't. You know, it's, it's, it takes time to build a good relationship. Yeah, I think doing the research is a key to success because right now it's easier than ever, you know, compared to, let's say, 10 years ago. Now you can look on LinkedIn to see if they're on Twitter or on Instagram. Absolutely. So you can learn more about the, the person in their professional life or uh, personal life. Maybe, uh, you know, they are interested in certain hobbies, right? You know, like you said, you know, I like what you comment on it. Like, how reason is that? Is it 10 years ago? Is it just they posted five minutes ago? So uh, when you mention something, you better be able to uh, back up to it. If they respond to you, do you have enough to go on with the conversation? Or are you just trying to point out things that, you know, may sound good uh, to impress that person? I think that's, as you say, there's so much generalities. You know, people look if you look at people's social media headings, especially something like Twitter, you know, they'll put on things like, um, you know, I love dogs or wine lover or whatever, you know, and it just, you don't have to be a wine expert to say, you know, I hear you love wine and you don't have to be a dog fanatic to say, you know, if you love dogs, do you know, my writer saying you've got dogs. Um, you know, it's, it's just a little starting point. But Twitter's an amazing source of information for things like that. People really give you a clue in capital letters. So let me ask you for an advice then. Like, I really am not good at small talk, right? When you, again, talk numbers, talk business, I'm all for it. So what let, let's assume I research for a prospect or uh, a contact that I want to reach out to, and I know a general idea of what they like. How should I begin my conversation? Should I still ask them how they are, or should I just go in and name something that they have recently done? 
I, because I have a personal thing about how you, how, how, how you are, um, you know, I, I, it's okay, but it's weak. Uh, you know, I think you want to show more interest in that, um, you know, and even if it's, uh, you, if you're talking to somebody in a social setting, it's great to be here, is it your first time here, you know, anything as simple as that, just as an opener. It's very important, I think, I, I mean, I used to be just the biggest hater of small talk and socialising ever. And, you know, I think it's really important to, to remember that the other person, chances are they are now, or certainly once were, but probably still are feeling exactly the same as you. They may have a bit of mask on and be covering it up, but the chances are they're praying for somebody to come along that make, they can make a nice conversation and enjoy things to do. Yeah, like when I used to go to networking mixers, I I, I would hide, uh, pretend I'm eating <laughs> a lot and just not trying to talk to anyone. But now, you know, I will force myself to warm up. So I might go to people that I know uh, to warm up, you know, right? When I get uh, start, when I started talking, I feel better. So when I yeah. see a new contact that I don't know, uh, you know, who they are, I'll make compliments or, you know, say something nice about uh, them. And then we kind of warm up to a conversation, uh, which might or might not uh, be about business. So I think it's getting there. But then like in a social <laughs> situation, I'll just hide and pretend I'm meeting and not. Oh, I know. It's anyone. been there. <laughs> but it, it does it takes practice and you know i find one of the, sort of just to start off with the, the chances are it's the people around the edges who are looking slightly desperate wondering if they should go and hide who are probably the ones struggling the most and therefore will be the ones who are most grateful and appreciative and you know you will be kindest to to go and approach first and get to know first you know because they will be more than happy it's very hard if you're not super confident to go into the group in the middle that's shouting so hard you can't hear what anybody's saying anyway uh you know if you've never met them that takes a lot of practice and and guts um but but the ones on the edges are really keen to talk to somebody and that somebody nice will actually come along and talk to them yeah so let's switch gears a little bit let's say you know we're ready to move forward. It seems like things are getting uh, better, right? Um, so how would you advise and you know suggest small business to promote sales and uh, increase their bottom line? You know, what are some of sure. the new uh, trends that you're seeing? I think, um, you know, there's, there's a lot small business can do. I think it's it, it obviously depends on what sector they're in as to how important the sales function is and how important the marketing function is. But, you know, don't ever sweep sales under the carpet. I, you know, it, it is part of what you do, whether you like it or not. You know, if you're going out to sell in person, it's a very big part of what you do. If it's just a part of your process, it's an important part of what you do. You know, without sales, you ain't got a business. So, so you know, please prioritize it and don't let anybody who's doing your marketing tell you you don't need sales anymore because you do. Um, you know, but it, like I say, it's it's firstly, it's much, much nicer to do. You know, you want people who are, you're going to have this long term relationship with, which means actually you want people that you're going to be able to develop that relationship with. If they're deeply difficult, deeply unpleasant and can't talk your language, don't talk your values, you're going to struggle to have a relationship anyway. So don't worry about those people. You know, you want people who buy into you and you buy into them so that you can have that important thing for contemporary sales, a mutually beneficial relationship. Because you want to see yourself as being of service to them and enhancing their lives in if you're dealing directly with the customer or their businesses if you're dealing with B2B. You know, you are improving their lives by doing business with them. And if you're not, there's something wrong. You know, you're flogging them a dead horse and we don't want to do that. You know, so it, it is mutually beneficial. You are bringing something to the table and they're giving you business. You know, so um, it's a good, you know, it's a good, should be a good thing all around. 
So chuck out that idea of I'm selling, so I'm pushing something that people don't want. Go right out the window. You know, you are finding people who you can deliver something of real value to. That's really important now. Because you won't succeed unless you get your head around that. And it's so much nicer anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think it's, I wanted to bring this on the uh, table because, you know, for uh, small business who find the niche or find the market, you know, wanted to scale a business. I do think there are actually opportunities right now if you know where you look, especially if you're here uh, in the U.S., you know, you can see uh, every day the news, you know, government uh, are spending more money in different sectors. You know, they're pumping millions of dollars in different uh, industry. So uh, what would you suggest a small business to do and how uh, if they have the mindset of uh, scaling a business and maybe they wanted to be a big business and not a small business anymore. I think, firstly, you're absolutely right. I think there are huge opportunities, and I see that talking to entrepreneurs all the time, that, you know, there, there are definitely opportunities out there, and that means just being aware of what's going on in the world, looking what sectors are being rewarded or thriving or whatever, and going out and looking for those contacts, you know, and it doesn't have to be. But, you know, with social media, it doesn't have to be complicated to find those contacts, you know. Um, they are sitting there. You just have to put a tagline of, you know, if you're selling automobile products, you know, of putting cars in the social media search box and it'll bring out absolute gold dust. You know, so, so you can be really active about, um, you know, going to look for companies in your space. Getting known is really important. Building your brand is more important than ever, um, you know, because it's such a crowded world out there. And actually, the other thing is, you know, we're talking about long value customers. And so you ought to be looking at those customers, uh, which, which we often don't have time and we don't prioritize. You ought to know your customers profile backwards so that you know exactly what the optimal customer looks like and therefore you can prioritize them you can look after them the best you can go and look for people of that profile and you can see and talk to them and see what else can you do for that customer you know they're the best possible customer that you could have so what are their particular needs right now? What are their pain points that nobody else is serving? Because the chances are you can serve it. That's usually not the problem. It's, it's finding somebody to buy from. And the person who knows it best is your optimal customer. So people ought to talk much more to the customers who are buying the most, happiest, not complaining, not being difficult, who are giving you the most profit, and you can really see lasting long term and and get more of them, get more like it, get more of their business. Yeah, I love that. You know, I'm more about finding your ideal clients. And, you know, I, I agree with you. So if for listeners who, are, who might not done this before, look at your accounting system, you know, look at, you know, maybe for this year, uh, which type of customer give you the most business? You can see in your accounting software. Uh, what kind of people are they? You know, maybe gender, maybe their job title, uh, maybe their uh, needs for your product and services. Um, how well and how else can you serve at that client? And another point that I want to try to bring out for all of us in sales, uh, let's say you have 10 VIP client that buys uh, from you the most. Are you able to find other company with sim similar job title and job function uh, that maybe you can try to clone that top 10 and then you have top 20? How would that affect your business? How would that affect your bottom line? So if you wanted to scale your business, I think this is a very uh, <coughs> strategy that you already have available. So you don't need anyone else. So you can just talk to your top 10 and you better have a good relationship with them, right? And then... Uh, find out why they're buying from you. You know, why do they choose you compared to other company uh, out there? And then 
maybe ask for a referral from your top 10 client yeah. or go out and find someone similar to what they are because you know uh, people who have similar needs that you can serve might be able to be your next client. Absolutely right. And as you, you also so so put so well, it's me stuttering, it's just, well, you put it well, but, um, you know, is find out from them what they view about you versus the competition because you may think that you beat joe down the road because you're great on price or whatever but they actually may not be bothered on price they may use you because you're excellent at design or whatever in comparison to joe so you know it's the customer's viewpoint of what you do and then you can uh, look at joe's business down the road and you can think well actually i know i do this better than them and i know the people who want this come to me but i'm not doing whatever it is quite so well and he's getting that so how can i improve that and get that business as well but it's your customers will give you the answers yeah, I love that idea. Um, so, Jen, for uh, viewers who wanted to get in touch with you, what would be the best way? And I know that you have a book uh, uh, came out. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Of course. Um, the book is called Scale for Success, and it comes out in the States on the 6th of July. So it's available to order from all good bookstores because it's published by Bloomsbury. So you can buy it not just from your Amazon, but and Barnes and & Noble and wherever and scale for success <clears throat> it is called and that's curious enough about scaling up and planning to scale up as well because it's really important to if you if you're hoping to scale for success to put the strategy in person in line so yeah absolutely love you to enjoy the book and if you'd like to get in touch with me uh, you can go to my website which is www.jancavell.co.uk and on there, you'll also get a free sample, free chapter, or whatever, of the book to download. And so you can see how you get on with that as well. So, yeah, okay. jancavell.co.uk. All right. Thank you so much, Jan, for the wonderful information. Again, it's all about the relationships. Absolutely. Absolutely. All about the relationships. Thank you. Thank you, Swear.